Good day folks, I want to show you another method that could work for you. Um, some people were asking about some more examples and schematics for the uh, feedback concept I talked about on an earlier video um, regarding two coils with uh, taking advantage of the back EMF feedback. I want to show you that you don't need to use the back EMF. I just chose the back EMF for some of my experiments because I wanted to take advantage of a system that was already happening and given a, a um, pulse DC, I was able to trigger a back EMF and integrate that into a project. But there is more than one way to do this and I will show you an alternate method that may be more suitable for beginners and you may have better luck experimenting with this and developing from this point on. So as you see, I have the basic crude schematic right here on my screen here. So the way this works is we have the trigger, which is an AC low voltage. So we'll say 12 volts AC. And your coils and your LC circuits, you're going to have to find out what values work best and they're going to have to be tuned. So you're going to have to calculate that. If you don't know the formulas by heart, you can go online and put in your inductance value and your capacitance and it would tell you what frequency. Now to keep things easier and if you want to experiment with already built transformers you should stick with 60 Hertz. It's a starting point you know and if you understand the concept you can later on build different frequencies but let's imagine this is 60 Hertz for now okay so you got your 60 Hertz regular sine wave AC here no, not pulse DC or anything like that, just regular sine wave, your negative cycle, your positive cycle, 60 hertz. But as you see in the wiring here, we've got the um, two coils in our transformer set up as a uh, dual LC circuits, and they are connected in parallel. So the trigger will activate both systems. Now, as you notice, one is 10 turns, this is an example, and the other one is five turns. So what's gonna happen is when the two systems get triggered into an oscillation state, there's going to be a voltage difference. There's going to be a built up because of the natural feedback and oscillations going on. But what's gonna happen where you're gonna start with two different voltage potentials that are going to quickly, well not two different voltage potentials, you're going to feed the same voltage but because of the difference with the oscillations you're going to build up. What I'm getting at is the two are going to increase voltages within the LC oscillations but they will be two different voltages because they're not the same ratio as you can see there's going to be a difference. So this is a way of kind of stepping the voltage up through the oscillation process. And then there's also the feedback system, which we later take advantage of. So as you see, it's, this, it's connected a little differently. So now what we have is on the other side of the capacitor, on each LC circuit, we have the ground here, which is very typical. So now what happens is the two circuits oscillate together and with the feedback intensified the amplitude goes higher. So how can we take advantage of this without losing it and heat and other energy systems we would normally lose? So we could take back this feedback like I did with some of my other circuits. So in this example I use a neon. So what the neon is going to do is at around 80 volts when this whole system builds up between the two here whichever one comes first when there's going to be an 80 volt which is likely going to be the 10 turns one was going to end up having the higher voltage between the oscillations it's going to create the circuit when this triggers the neon so the neon is actually going to also act as a protection layer so that our feedback doesn't go much more over 80 volts because the neon triggers at around 80 volts. So what's that going to do is when the neon triggers it's going to go through another transformer here and create a, a, a load in this winding here. And it's going to short out as you see the two pluses on the primary side but being in an oscillation cycle and the two being different voltage potentials, now you're, um, you're creating a difference in voltage potential. So what's going to happen is when the neon fires, 
through this coil here. There's going to be 80 volts going through this coil, but also it's going to create a path for the original current input. So we're taking advantage of the feedback, bringing up the amplitude, creating the feedback, and whenever it reaches around 80, we tap a little bit into that feedback and send it into a second coil here. And that coil also switches the original current. So what happens is all of a sudden, we've got the same amount of current in our input over here than we have in our trigger, but at much higher voltages coming in the 80 volts. So you, you all know that 80 volts at, at let's say, uh, 2 amps will do a lot more work than 12 volts at 2 amps. Well, with this system here, when the neon triggers, it lets the 2 amp cur trigger current pass with the addition of the 80 volts build up from the feedback. And for a moment, with the regular transformer action, we then step this back down to 12 volts. We end up getting a higher current output, and we can rectify that to DC output. My point being, we could use the feedback in an LC resonant tuned circuit as well to produce similar effects. And we can tap a little bit of the feedback amplitude and increase with the feedback carefully and use the extra that we can convert but would normally be lost using this method here. Now, you could, if you understand how this works, you can go one step further and get some really, really, really big power if you would, let's say, convert this transformer here into a microwave transformer, replace the neon with a spark gap assembly instead, so all of a sudden, your your it's going to be, the break gap is going to be over a thousand volts, so you're going to be switching a thousand volts in here, but with the same input current, because you're creating a path, but there are two circuits oscillating, so if you've got the microwave transformer, you're going to bring that, you're going to get a spark gap potential, because it's going to rise quickly over a thousand. So you're going to be switching a thousand volts, let's say at one or two amps, you're going to let the primary with the secondary kind of if and roughly speaking because of the oscillations and the tune resonance allows for this feedback uh, amplitude build up and if we can take the feedback the extra we get in feedback we can tap a little bit into that without affecting our trigger so in essence we get more electrical current output than we have to put in the electrical output and trigger and we're not really, again, violating any laws of physics. We're just using feedback and finding an efficient way to tap into that feedback. We're maintaining that feedback. And this circuit here, I'm not showing specifically how to loop it back, but you can be creative. And there's a million ways where you can use the output to keep your trigger. So again, this is more than many ways. This is more of a schematic that shows you um, an alternate way of doing it but again there's more than one ways of doing this uh, this is using regular AC sine waves and using the uh, advantage of a tune LC resonance circuit here um, my original version does this a little differently it uses the back EMF as a trigger pulse but it uses similar principles of feedback and res and resonance so I hope this maybe sheds a bit of a light on what I'm doing and that it could give you, put your folks in the right direction, and um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you.